Hello, this is Daniel March, back again at MCP 2019. This time around, I have Jonathan Martin. Hi, hey, this is my guest. Yes, yeah, sir. How's it going? Um, so yeah, and you did the devil, Kiss the Devil in the Dark. I did, yes. Right. I did. So, and just explain to the audience exactly what the film's about. So, Kiss the Devil in the Dark is a dark fantasy film that, uh, it's a story that's set in a pseudo-Victorian world. Um, kind of dark fantasy world, but it's uh, it's uh, really a deal between it's a world of sorcerers and demons, and this powerful sorcerer named Marcus makes a makes a pact with the demon Dagon to save his dying wife's life. But what he doesn't know is that Dagon has uh, other plans in store for him, and he knows a dark truth. That we're going to find out throughout the course of the film, and so, like I said, there's there's sorcery and magic and demons and sex and betrayal, and and so the tagline for the film is actually betrayal is the darkest magic. Great so there it is. So how did you come up with that story overall? So I made the film with my sister, right. uh, Rebecca, and so we co-directed that together, and she came up with the story when she was seventeen. So at 17, we went and made it. Now, fortunately, she had a brother who made films and all that. So we kind of shepherded her into this. And, uh, and we went out and we, uh, we just went out and made it happen. And so, uh, me with some of my experience, you know, I kind of helped her as we, uh, co-directed it together, kind of went through the drafts and the writing process with her as well. So the story's hers. And obviously, I had some of my input, mm -hmm. but uh, the main thing is is that uh, it's something that originates with uh, my sister Rebecca. So, so, how long did it take to develop it? Which first I had the idea to basically when you finally completed it and started screening it. Oh, that's a whole other tale. <laughs> that's a whole other story. Um, so, when we came up with the idea, it was in early 2013. And then uh, we went through the whole process, got the whole casting, we went through a lot of different iterations. In fact, there was a version of the film that we were on the brink of getting ready to film. We had actually cast people for the roles and all that. Mm -hmm. But then as we kind of broke down the budget, that's a whole other story. Right. Um, to be frank, there were some uh, other people involved that were um, misappropriating the funds. That doesn't mean they were stealing or anything like right. that. They were just misappropriating where the money was going to and how it was being spent. Okay. And so that created some difficulties because, and this was unbeknown to us right. as far as it was going. But we still take responsibility. Of course. And, uh, and so basically, this is why you only work with your most trusted friends, people, and that's why you also have to believe in yourself. But what happens is, is uh, basically, uh, we had a version that went through, and, and then we wrote, rewrote that to bring it to the version that we filmed. And then even then, we had this epic film that we only had four days to shoot in, which was originally six, even though we had this great cast and all that. So we had to rush a lot of things to get it going, and I mean, we didn't have a visual effects supervisor or anything, we had 200 visual effects shots in it, which is more than actually the majority of most Hollywood films outside the big blockbuster films. <laughs> Give a perspective, we had about 200 visual effects shots, Back to the Future had 30. Yeah. So it gives you an idea, like the scale of what we were working with, and some of the shots you wouldn't even know were a visual effects shot, but they were. And so through all that and having to make sure that it went through, it went through a very, very long process of actually getting finished and finalized. So it really started going out. We had a moment where we thought it was going to be done actually in 2016 after all this time. And it screened a couple festivals. And then after looking at it, it's like, this is not ready yet and all that. And there were scheduling conflicts and stuff with some of the post team where some of the money was already allocated to. So finally, about last, uh, late last summer, early fall, the film started really going out on the circuit last year. And so it's played about um, 35 festivals so far around the world. Around there. Yeah, around there. I'd have to look into what it is. Um, but it's also done well. It's it's uh, it's won 41 awards today. Thank you. Thank you. So so that at least is kind of a, a, a testimony to the hard work that we did and, and also to some of the quality performances and visuals that are in the film. Yeah, so. supposedly looks like, you say it was rushed in like four days, it does not look rushed at all. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean there's, there's gotta be a couple hundred setups on there and stuff like that. Right. So, I mean, 
They were very long, very full days. I have a very a big love-hate relationship with the film. I think that's most filmmakers with most of their films at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I really do. You know, like, that's really what I really do. But, uh, but you know, it's out on the circuit now, and we're having a good time. As far as I mean, of course not. And the costume for the, for the, for the demons were dragged on and his two, and his two um, companions. That was incredible. How did you guys accomplish that exactly? So the makeup and costumes yeah. and all that? So so the makeup was done by, because uh, we made the film totally in Utah. And that's that's where I'm based. And uh, Doug Jones is the star of the film, but also Amy Leah and Amrita Acharya play the other demons. And so there's a makeup artist that I work with uh, named Chris Hansen. And we worked on all our projects together, all my short films. And he's really the top makeup artist in Utah. I mean, he is the guy. And so, you know, we, we had done this uh, preview at the time, a previous couple collaborations before. And so this one, let's, let's go big, let's have some fun. So I told him what I wanted. We wanted to go with more of a classical kind of demon as far as it goes. So Dagon is based more on kind of a goat design, kind of the, the Beelzebub, you know, the satanic look, but not satanic. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other two were more your classical demons with the horns that come back and almost something, um, you know, elfish in the ears and stuff right. like that. But actually, they almost look naked even though they're not. Yeah. And the form and the scales and all that, they come in. So that was a combination of, on Dagon, that was silicone. But on the female demons, that was a foam latex uh, application and then also some body painted that kind of blended in with the whole thing as well as the costuming which was done by Rachel Domingo for that. Nice. Yeah, the uh, makeup, was, um, makeup costume, that was incredible. It was Thank just you. Too, for the demons, that was great. And then you have Doug Jones, how did that happen? Well, Doug and I met at a festival in 2011 called Scream Fest nice. in Hollywood, which is the top horror festival in right. the world. And uh, we had actually met about six months previously. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, uh, but we didn't really talk too much. It was very, very brief. And then I saw him walking into the Chinese theater, and I was like, "Hey, you're Doug Jones." He goes, "Yes, I am." I said, "Hey, we actually met and all that." And he's like, "Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember." I said, "Well, it happens to be that film is playing tonight." Mm -hmm. And I said, "Do you want to stay and watch it?" He's like, "Well, I'm here for this other friend of mine's film, but if you know, I'm up for it and all that, I'll stay and watch your film." And he did. Right. And he absolutely loved it and adored it. In fact, he did this uh, interview with Interview Magazine, which was pretty prestigious. And he was actually, people asked him almost that very question. And he actually talked about me and the film and his experience watching it. And he said, I tackled him afterwards. He's like, I've never seen anything like it. And I was like, who are you? How can we, you know, like, let's talk, let's work together. Right. And so so that's what that's what happened. And then we had this opportunity to come in. So we reached out to him. And, and he was interested, and so we did it. And at that point, he was intentionally, he was about to go back into really doing Hollywood films again. Right. And at that point, he, he actually took about a two or three years sabbatical from doing the big films, because mm -hmm. he wanted to work on small films, little films with other coming right. filmmakers and stuff like that. So I kind of fell into that window as well. Nice. So, but he's, he's been a friend since. Nice. So, yeah, because yeah. like, you don't, like, no offense, but you don't really expect Doug Jones to be like in indie films. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, that's great. Thank you. And then also you have the you you have great costume, you also have great visual effects, you know, when you have like the portal to hell and all that. Um how how's the process to actually develop developing all that? I mean we didn't have a visual effects supervisor, so I mean it really kinda of begins obviously with like the script and the uh, the storyboards. Mm -hmm. So we knew what we wanted to do, we had an idea of what our visuals would be. Um, but like I said, we had done some consulting, like to get like to make it look even further real. So every time we had magic that would explode out of their hands, we would actually shoot a mag light, like kind of off camera, like right at them, right. And so we'd kind of like, and it would shine right in there as far as that goes. And that that camera would kind of come in, and uh, and then you would be able to build the effect on top of it from there on, right. And so what we did is, and then you're painting around the roto, you're getting all around the fingers, and you're creating depth in the whole process. And so I had to supervise them, basically kind of go through with them all. So we had green screen shots, we had a few shots from scratch, and you have to have the idea of generally what you're doing. And then it was a whole big process that took a couple years to really work through the whole thing and be like, okay, this is how we got to do this, this is how we got to round this in, and this is how we're going to bring this home, right? Nice. So yeah, so that's what it is. It was just kind of having an idea. And, at times you'd be like, guys, I, I really don't know what it is we got to do, so I know this is what we need, right. so how can we get there? And then they'd kind of show you a couple things, you're like, no, that's not really it, and then they'd have something, you're like, or you'd see something, you're like, okay, 
I know what we got to do. Let's do this as far as this goes. Okay, that, that's going to make that sense. So, like, yeah. basically, you see kind of trial and error and then go from there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, not always, not right. always. But there's times where, yeah, that's that's what you're looking at as far as it goes. And um, and I got a big, a big, big, big shout out because they did the majority of the visual effects works uh, to Tempered Pixel, which is a group of guys out in Manchester, England, and got them by fortuitous circumstances. And they reached out to me, and it was a great relationship. In the film, you have a lot of these like ritualistic elements. Did you have to do any prior research through that? Like, how did that go about? No, no I just make it up. I just make it up. No, no, no. It's, it's fantasy, you know what I mean? That's one of the great things about fantasy is you can kind of make up everything as you kind of go around with it, right? And so just kind of enjoy that as far as that goes. So, no, you just kind of make it up with it. You just kind of write from what you know and what you're familiar with and what have you. But we did have to get uh, the dialogue translated into Latin and then uh, do up Latin in the film. The demons speak in Latin and, um, and they communicate with each other through that way. And what happens is, is um, uh, so we had somebody translate it and he asked us, well, which way do you want to do it? Do you want it more like priest or do you want it to be more flowery or something like that? So he recorded all that and then the actors would take that and listen to what he was doing and then basically reinterpret that as they memorize the lines. Nice. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So from the time you basically began production, so basically right as now, what's been your favorite aspect of this whole filmmaking process? From this particular film? Yes. Uh, probably seeing it pretty much done. <laughs> Uh, like that's my favorite part of it, like kind of bury it and kind of get it out there and just put it in there. Um, you know, because we're not we're not being as ambitious with festivals on this one as we've been in other past. We have different goals with this. Other festivals we played until you know until we just got tired of it. This one it was more like no, we want to just do this, go to this level, then just get it out there more for the public. Kind of a quicker turnaround as far as regardless because the post production process took so long. And people kind of looked at it. We just didn't want to waste too much time as far as that goes. So, so we did that, and um, and then uh, so that that's been something I've enjoyed. And then um, you know, partly my favorite part of the process is working with Doug and some of the other actors that I worked with on there, like Jimmy Clark and Rio Charia, my friend Gary Reimer, Rick Macy, who's been in all my works. He's always been a pleasure. You know, everybody, the whole team, and so I've always been appreciative of that, and also working with my sister. And now that the film is out, what do you see for in the future? Like, do you, are you planning to on that, like streaming services or something like that? Like, you know, I, I'm looking at my options as yeah. far as that goes. I might actually self-release and just kind of boost it as far as that goes. Uh, I've had distribution deals in the past, and all this yeah. fine, and I've made some money. I think the uh, times have changed in the last in the last uh, few years, and so. Um, so I'm kind of looking and exploring those options currently right now. Um, and as far as the property and stuff itself, I see that more of, if it ever has further life. I see it more of actually as like a television series. You know, something more as like a mini series or as a television series. So that's where I see the life for this particular project as. I don't see it really as a feature film series or anything like that. So, yeah. And as the audience reaction, um, Exceeded your expectation? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, we've had some really, really strong reactions in the screenings and the positive. I mean, this film's a little bit of a darker story. Right. Uh, there's an uplifting moment after the credits, if you stay. Uh, I mean, we've had some electric screenings that went really, really well. And I've had some where I could tell that it was just like a little bit more indifferent. But then oftentimes people will come up after me, like actually several weeks later or even a month, and be like, hey, I actually really like the film. I think it's a film that lingers well with people. Right. I think as they take it, you know, it's, it's in some ways it can be a little bit of a gut punch in, yeah. the, in, the, in the story you go on. Yeah, the story is a little bit jarring. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and you realize, oh my gosh, they pulled the rug from under us. Mm -hmm. This is really what was happening the whole time. And we're discovering this, and it's, and it's this thing. Um, but, you know, people, uh, you know, they make their, <coughs> excuse me, they make their discoveries. And, and then I think as they kind of say about that, I think, I think a lot of people really kind of come in like, you know what, that was actually pretty cool. Right. That was actually like, that was really different from what you normally see. And I and I do know, I do have to say, it's a it's a different film from what you would see on the circuit right now. There's really no dark fantasy out there or anything that kind of looks or acts like it. Yeah, you've seen the past. There are fantasies yeah. usually not uh, genre that gets yeah. a lot of focus when it comes to the local films. Especially dark fantasy. Right. So, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's a very interesting genre niche to go into. Mm -hmm. We don't really see it that much. 
And in this is your first year at uh, uh, MCP, right? This is my second time. Second time. Mm -hmm. When was first? I played two years ago with a film called Creatures of Whitechapel. I actually won Best Director that year. So, and we've also won Best Actor. So. I can't remember that one, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we actually were second place for like audience choice or something nice. you know, in that way. So. I might have a guest over there. How much longer? I, 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 I was like, I, somebody was coming by and I was going to say hi to and all that. So, because okay. so, that makes sense to my next question, which yeah. was, would you come back into Missy Fee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, kind of, I'm kind of done with the uh, festival circuit right. as far as that goes, with at least with shorts and stuff like right. that. But now I'm like, you know, we'll see. We'll see where the future goes. We'll see where it goes. You want to go back to back, yeah, right? that's what I'm focusing on now. I've kind of, kind of proven my point with shorts, to be honest. So, uh, there, there. Well, thank you. Um, and then, I know you kind of already answered this one, but just um, to give the audience some more yeah. of an idea, because um, you said that um, in terms of film for future, you may be looking for networking, but like for like the immediate future, are there any other film festivals that's going to be showing? Or uh, this is uh, Miami Sci-Fi kind of happens when other genre fests aren't necessarily happening, right. and that's all I really kind of focused on. So we won't really start hearing from more festivals until. I think end of April, early May, okay. and so we'll kind of be playing through the end of summer and fall, and that'll be it. All right. So that's that's what we're doing. Our goal is really just to play about 50 festivals. Um, that's really about it. And like I said, we're like 35 now. Sure. Yeah, and so you know, um, we'll see how many more I go to personally and stuff like that. But we definitely want to get it out there and let people see the work and enjoy the work. Right. So yeah. Is there any place like on Instagram or like Facebook or that could, uh, people could find you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can find me on my Instagram at Johnny Astros, J O H N N Y Astros, A S T R O S. And that's my Instagram. And uh, you can also find me at Bohemian Industries. And you can also go to my website, bohemianindustries.com. Or you could find that on Facebook as well, Bohemian Industries. And I also run a film festival called Film Quest, nice. which is a genre festival every September in, U in Utah. Okay. Yeah. I'll leave all those links, all that information yeah. down below in the description. Do. So for all those who want to follow follow him, go ahead. Yes, please do. And I think that's all the questions I have for, for yeah. tonight. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Great film, as I said. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, but I really love the costumes, to be honest. Oh, thank you. Um, and the special effects. The film is great enough yeah. overall, but the costumes, though, in my opinion, the biggest thing. Well, thank you. Very much. Um, I appreciate that. So yeah, that's basically it for, for tonight. Look out for more interviews coming up. This is Daniel Mart with Jonathan Martin. Sign off. Thank you.